being late today. I really appreciate everyone's patience and bearing with us. I know some have stayed this late. Just from the bottom of my heart, I really thank you for being here and supporting us. I'm sorry, oh, you know, about the timing. Okay, I I like, um, so that, just that, bear that, with that. us for Mercy's here, and then we just have two more performances, and that'll be it. So. Mercy! Let's welcome Mercy on stage! Yay! Make some noise! Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the ending-ish of the uh, Proud to be Asian rally. I am one of the medics here working with Atlanta Justice Alliance. Um, yeah, I'm here to ensure everyone's safe and having a good time. Um, okay, so I am a part of the AAPI community. I am Asian American, predominantly Chinese and Taiwanese. My mother immigrated here uh, from Taiwan to the United States. She learned how to speak English by watching American sitcoms and reading manga. Um, <clears throat> I was the first person in my family to be born on U.S. soil. I was actually born and raised right here in Atlanta. Um, I grew up as an Asian American speaking both English and Mandarin. At school, I would hear every single Asian joke under the sun. Uh, people call me Ling Ling, fortune cookie, you know, the whole nine. For some reason, a lot of the slurs were food related. Don't know why. Um, <laughs> they would come up to me and ask me how I could see through slits and they would squint their eyes. Um, when I went home, I spoke Chinese Mandarin to my family. My grandmother, who came here shortly after my mom, uh, didn't speak any English. She only spoke Mandarin. So I would speak Mandarin with her, and she would try to teach me how to read and write in Mandarin. And I would get really embarrassed because people at school would constantly make fun of Chinese and how it looked like scribbles. So I always like brushed her off and was like, no, I don't want to learn how to write in scribbles. That's embarrassing. And I would get annoyed with her. To this day, I still regret that decision. As I got older, I started to notice that the jokes got more aggressive and grosser. Um, I was born a woman, I was born a female, an Asian female, and so I was immediately classified as a fetish. I was put into this box without even realizing what it was. As I look around, I see that probably a lot of you understand what that's like, probably know what that feels like. Um, I ask you this question. Why is it okay for Asian women to be hypersexualized and fetishized and Asian men to be emasculated? There's a simple answer. Racial inequality teaches the vast majority that it is okay for our culture, along with many other cultures, to be capitalized off of and stolen but it is not worthy of being protected or respected. I'll say that again. Racial inequality teaches the vast majority that it is okay for our culture to be capitalized off of and stolen, but it's not worthy of being protected or respected. Last summer, the summer of 2020, Atlanta erupted in protests in the wake of George Floyd's murder. I marched on these streets alongside my comrades and listened to the stories of black people. I learned how to be a good ally. I learned, today standing here, I'm going to teach you what I learned. I learned how to listen, to not just hear these stories, but to actually learn from them and learn from my mistakes. I started to ask myself questions like, what can I do to prevent these things from happening? What kind of internalized racism do I have to unlearn? Am I really in danger, or is this just the work of racial bias? Every day, I am actively calling myself out, constantly teaching myself to be aggressively anti-racist. In today's world, it is not enough to not be racist. We have to stand together to continue to be actively aggressively anti-racist. If you drink boba, 
or eat Asian cuisine, you need to be aggressively anti-racist. <laughs> if you watch anime or cosplay, you need to be aggressively anti-racist. You tell them. <laughs> if you listen to hip hop or live in the city of Atlanta, you need to be aggressively anti-racist. No longer can we be silent and complacent. No longer will we allow these injustices to continue. We must stand together as a community, arm in arm with our fellow people. We must keep going. I feel that we're on the brink of something great, but we have to keep putting in the work. We cannot be free on stolen land with stolen people. But we can sure as hell try. Today, we are writing a new history. We are history. Let's give them something to write about. Stop Asian hate. Black Lives Matter. We the people. Thank you.